Our guest this hour is Mr. Charles Waria. Charles is the lead monitoring and evaluation and learning at the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. Lead monitoring and evaluation and learning. Okay. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Especially the learning bit. It's we just know M and E. <laughs> this is M and E and L. No, it is, it is, it is, it is descriptive. Uh -huh. Yes, because when you say monitoring and evaluation, what lessons do you Well, do you, you do? leave someone hanging. Okay, you've monitored, you've evaluated, and then, then what? Uh, yeah. So this one, they tell you, okay, when you've done that, now you learn. Yes. I was hoping there'd be implementation. At yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> they, they take on the lessons then to the implementers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Probably yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what you do. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Situation Room, Charles. Thank you. Good to have you in the show. We call this the hot seat where you sit and mm -hmm. um, we'll just warm it Ooh. up for you a little bit <laughs> as we have this conversation about fighting unemployment through entrepreneurship. Yes. Now that by itself is already just a hot topic. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because this is a conversation many people have, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you went to school, yeah, you're looking for a job, yeah, yeah, but you forget it. You can go the entrepreneurship route. You'll tell us how. And then the people will tell you how. But tell us about the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. Yes. So we call it in short KCJF. Mm -hmm. um, and KCJF was, was um, designed by the UK government as part of the, Her Majesty's uh, government contribution towards addressing unemployment in Kenya. It's, it's slightly different from other funds that you have, in the sense that the other funds uh, uh, look to address issues of skills and skill building, um, you know, and, and placement. Uh, so a lot, a lot of um, what you see out there as, as, as jobs funds mm. are basically training funds. They, they are directed towards TVETs, you know, to address what, what, is, what is first appearing as a perception around skills gap. Mm. That, you know, our, our young people, when they come out of our college, they don't have the skills that the industry needs, and therefore that's, there's, a, there's a mismatch. The Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund is different because it, it wants to look at something that, that is not being done before um, to create jobs. So unlocking the, the missing link. Mm. The missing link in this case is millions of, of young Kenyans have beautiful ideas beautiful ideas that can be converted to to industry, to create jobs, can be converted to enterprises. Mm. But those beautiful ideas are also solutions. Um, typically, when you talk to, to every Kenyan, every Kenyan who, who's, who's, who's normal, they always have solutions. Kenyans have solutions to the things that are, that are, that are you know, uh, happening in the country. Mm. They just don't get much audience about it, and they don't get much opportunity to actualize those solutions. Mm. Mm. At the KCGF, we're looking at the next level of that and say, look, have you tried it? Has it worked? Is it working in, small, in, a, in a small capacity? Can it then, can it then grow? Can we, can we work with you to grow it? Mm. So we're not looking for, for ideas. We're looking for viable solutions that have been tried, mm. but they've been tried in small scale. The only problem they have is they don't have the funds to, then, to, make, to make it a reality. Right. So they don't, they don't have the funds to, to build on that innovation broadly. They don't have the funds to unlock the market for the products that they're creating. Uh, you know, they don't have the funds to, to look for some, some, some solution, some platform. For example, they, you, have, you have an idea, you mm -hmm. have the product, but you need a platform to then sell it. So you don't have a platform. So we come in and partner with you mm -hmm. um, through that. It's, it's, uh, it's a five million pound um, program. We'll How much running. is that in Kenya shilling in today's exchange rate? Uh, by 145. Hey. <laughs> okay, some good money. <laughs> hey, that's some good money. There's a, a bit of this, of, of the title of the, of the fund, yeah. Catalytic Jobs Fund. Yeah. And I'm sure the word catalytic is actually inserted there for a reason. Yeah. What's that reason? Um, because we want to catalyze small solutions into big solutions. Mm. We want to find Eric. Eric is doing something. Eric is playing small, but Eric has capacity to go big. Yeah. With with one hundred thousand pounds, we can turn around Eric's business. You know, from being a small producer to an exporter. Mm. One hundred thousand pounds is about uh, fourteen million shillings. Mm. You know, so fourteen million shillings can unlock whatever it is that, that that's preventing you from exporting the avocado, for example. Why aren't you able to export? But catalytic also is that we want other people in that space to see how Eric's business can grow and also start similar businesses, you know. Mm. So, so if a company is trading in macadamia, why should it be the only, the only company trading in macadamia? Why don't we unlock that space so we have more people, you know, because as, as more people begin to sell macadamia, mm. more people begin to buy them from farmers. As more people begin to buy from farmers, farmers are 
uh, uh, you know you get them to reproduce you catalyze them to produce yeah, to, to, to catalyze Charles, yes mm. does this not then assume that the market for macadamia <laughs> is constantly expanding at the rate at which you're expanding <laughs> those who are growing it and selling it absolutely absolutely in fact as a matter of fact the the existing market for macadamia is not even been scratched you know you know so while while, while uh, the consumption of macadamia is only 2% in kenya mm. The, the 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 western the western western countries the consumption of macadamia is growing every day it's, it's yeah. the healthiest snack that everyone wants what is so healthy about it that well. supersedes groundnuts <laughs> <laughs> go and ask them sure <laughs> up, but uh, one of our yeah. biggest markets for for nuts actually is america it is america usa is yeah. one of our biggest markets export markets for oh, nuts absolutely. from kenya absolutely 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 and they want mm. the one hitting different ships mm. um Sometimes what fails uh, our local producers is is a lack of understanding of that market. So mm. when I when I when I've spoken to the companies that we support that export of um, uh, macadamia, even even how you crack it is important. Mm. You know, sometimes you you don't crack it properly, it chips. That's it, it lowers the price. Sure. Uh, you know, but also how the farmers grow it. Mm. The way the farmers grow it will determine: Do you have a bigger nut? Do you have a medium nut? Do you have a small nut? Mm. Bigger nut fetches you more money. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on with the nuts, yes. Mm -hmm. Small, medium size, big nut. Yes. Carry on. Yes. <laughs> and, and and Charles, carry on, please. Sometimes there's also a market for cracked nuts. So if you have, <laughs> if you have cracked nuts, there's... <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Do you better intervene here. Every, every, so, yes. <laughs> how then do you determine... I mean, because clearly, so what I'm hearing you say is that yeah. you're providing a key, the platform that would unlock or, you know, creating the perfect marriage between opportunity and the lack thereof. Yeah. So coming together, creating this platform, unlocking the, the, yeah. the opportunities that lie therein. Yeah. How do you determine who you then help? Because I have a problem. He has a problem. Everybody needs this, you know, opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who do you determine? Because if we're looking at the percentages, Charles. Yeah of numbers of people in this country who have um have to deal with the the, the worries of unemployment mm -hmm. who have to deal with many things like access to credit should they lack employment and going into business access to credit is an issue yeah. access to opportunities another issue how then do you decide who you're going to help and then who you're not going to right um so every year we have what we call a business competition mm. but before we get to the business competition we have call for proposals mm. we put up a call in the, in the media in fact we actually we actually launched the call in the media so that as many businesses as possible and as many young people as possible can know about the the that the fund is now open mm -hmm. you can now apply we receive a minimum of 850 applications mm. from small small medium businesses we have to then take them through a rigorous process of of analysis and review and and you know uh, uh selection up to a top 20 and then the, of course then there's you know you must do a balancing between city based rural based uh, arid areas and, and all that also balancing between men and women mm -hmm. because otherwise if we if we leave it openly the urbanites tend to take all the slots because right. they have a quick access to information they can put in good applications mm -hmm. they, they have good english and they're better able to articulate the issues so we try to to bring a balance from the top 20 we then reduce the list down to to top 10 and the top 10 have they go through a business competition where you now come and pitch before a panel we have we, we all we, each year we constitute uh, an independent panel uh, the businesses uh, ktn has been kind enough to cover it twice mm, they come they pitch openly mm -hmm. you know and uh, the judges make a make a make a decision on which was the best pitch uh, out of that we get the five top winners and the five top winners walk home with one hundred thousand pounds each. Mm. Yes. Mm. How much? One hundred thousand pounds. In Kenyan shillings? Fourteen point five million. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, how then? I'm, I, and I, I can hear the you, you, you eight hundred and fifty then whittle down to five. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. But then obviously shows you that there is a glaring need. Sure, you're yeah. going to have some apples here who maybe yeah. not really serious about their business. But there's a glaring need that obviously other institutions are not taking up. Yeah. Uh, government is not providing uh, in, enough support for. What then must be the outlook beyond what you're doing yeah. as this organization? Yeah. 
what then, in your opinion, mm. then needs to be done to tackle this clear, huge need for help for young people or even older people when it comes to the job market, which is non-existent yeah. for them, yeah. and then these opportunities that might uh, present themselves? So, absolutely, it needs a multi-stakeholder approach to it mm. that will involve, will involve both you know, um, funds like ours, it has to be in government. Mm. Government has to set aside funds for, for young people to do the same process, you know, go through business competition, uh, you know, and, and get the funds. The private sector can do it. Mm. The good thing is that the the venture capital space and the invest, impact, impact investment space in Kenya is growing really, really wide now. There's lots of funds that have come into the space. Uh, some of them are as, close, as big as, as ours, some of them smaller. Yeah. We have lots of them. Um, Sinapis is giving about ten thousand, ten thousand dollars, mm. um, and a couple of others were giving about ten thousand, twenty thousand. So, so there's lots of small, small funds. The challenge, the challenge is is less about the funds. Mm. The challenge is the the viability of the solutions. So a lot of a lot of young Kenyans have ideas. They are mm. they're still in the idea stage. Yeah. They haven't applied thought to it properly. So if you if you if you put them across the table, put her across the table, and say, so where would you sell this? How how do you know the market is there? They were like, oh, you know, we've been thinking, we've been thinking about uh, looking for the market. You know, basic things. For example, mm. you can't you can't say you can produce it when you don't know where you're going to sell it. Mm. So a lot of them do not meet that test of yes, I can <laughs> yes I can produce this thing, but also I know where I'm going to sell it. I know so I know how the demand question. is. Yeah, who do you partner with? In getting this done, let me let me explain why I'm asking the yes, question. Yes, because yes. when you're talking about the youth, you it's you who exactly set this train of thought in my mind when you started talking about some of the pitfalls that uh, some of our younger citizens face. Mm -hmm. Certain skills, certain abilities have to be taught. Yeah. Either you come from a community where you see it done, so you have the power of example to follow. But for most people, it has to start, because that is a way of learning and an effective one, but they have to be taught. Now, when I ask about partners, I'm referring to institutions, I'm referring to government ministries, I'm referring to NGOs, I'm referring to people who make it their business to deal with young people on a daily basis and, and already have a foothold in communicating with them. Because this is one definite way of communicating with young people on how it is their lives can actually be improved. So, you as an entity may not have the wherewithal to do this right across the country. Yes. So, that's where the question of the partners come in. So, so as a fund, we are not um, designed to do skilling. So, we've been very deliberate from the start mm -hmm. that this fund is not going to be funds to, to build capacity of young people. Um, however, we have partnered with some of the local organizations, for example, an amazing one called Build Her. Build Her is a women's program. Mm -hmm. It's a women's, it's, 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 they, they are trying to do something pretty unique. They are trying to expand spaces and participation by women in the construction industry. So they are, they are, they are, they are opening up women's entry into construction industry. Uh -huh. So we partner with them to, to grow that space, to get women, more women working into that, in, in that sector. However, the, for women to, to sustainably enter into that industry, they need certain certifications, you know, uh, and those cert certifications by NITA, mm -hmm. certifications by NCA. So we, we then, you know, partner with Builder to go the extra mile and say, look, how many of those that you work with need to get the, the national certification? What does it require? You know, is it the national exams? What, so we'll do, whatever, we'll do whatever it takes just to get them that, that you know, those, the skills that they have. Are anchored on certain certificates because mm. otherwise, without the certificates, they right. can't they can't get, they the, jobs. get the jobs. Yeah. Yes. So, so, but that's that's in as mm. far as we go, mm. um, because because you build has program is a very unique program. Only in the entire construction industry, women make up only three percent. Those three percent barely sustain their work because the, the construction sector is not designed for women. Mm. If we go to a site, a construction site. Sometimes it's one toilet. That's mm. one toilet to be shared by men and women. Mm. You will hear the stories of how women will tell you, look, we can't use it. Yeah. We can't use it because you don't want to know things that happen when you go into that into that toilet. Yeah. You know? Mm. So 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 a lot of what construction sites aren't built for women and build her is is trying to unlock that barrier mm. into entry and get as many women as possible. The women have, have shown uh, that they can given a chance, they can they can do a lot more, you know, even more than men. Uh, in an opportunity so so that's the far that's the far we go 
with the so the other organizations then come in to either build skill or listen to idea and try and convert the idea into viable solution so the, by the time they're participating in this um, competition they're coming here with some solutions yes but then even just like uh, what kipto is saying picking only five out of 800 and in fact there are even many more applicants yeah what do you do with the other 795 very good question. applicants very good question it's, it's been for, for a while it was a, it was a dilemma for us mm. uh, because out of those 700 plus they were, they were not all bad they have some very almost 80 percent of them are very good proposals mm. so we've been we've been we've been thinking out of the box uh since our court too what we do is we now how we, we organize certain investor roundtables and those through those investor roundtables, these guys aren't the ones selected. They are therefore pitched to a bigger pool of investors. We've seen we've seen uh, examples where they are, those investors have been picked some. Uh, you know, from that we're still doing also we're doing I think next week or the other week we're doing another one for the core three. Uh, but we're also doing a lot more of ecosystem networking. Mm. You know, uh, trying to showcase these guys. You know, trying to talk to different kinds of investors. Some of the judges in our panels are also investors in themselves. So we're also trying to see, look, if you if you find from this pool something that you can fund. So so we're going out of the way to 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 see, look, there's there's a lot of good applications. Our fund is limited. Mm. There are many funds out there. So which of those can we knock on their behalf and say, just give them a year, just listen to what they have. Yes, yes. What criteria do you use for selecting your judges? Um, so we have a broad we have a broad criterion from um, different sectors, uh, um, investors, uh, um, entrepreneurs, um, funders, you know, uh, government. So the last one we had we had someone from government, we had someone from um, from the funding, we have someone from we have Dr. Bitange from the university, is a leading. Um, uh, innov innovator, you know, uh, and he thinks broadly in that sector. Uh -huh. We have we have Dan Kanonyango, who is now uh -huh. the CEO of uh, Faro Ventures. He was then the team leader for the SWED. SWED is the Sustainable Urban Development Program. Um, and we have we have um, Mark Mukuria. Mark Mukuria is a is, is a venture capitalist, um, and a couple of others. So so de de depending on um, um, what we think would be suitable. You know, in terms of uh, the innovation space, the growth, the investment, the, 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 the catalytic uh, nature of things, then we pick different kinds of people. Charles, all these people you've mentioned are technical people, people who have shown capability and ability in innovation and in understanding innovation. Do you have people who actually understand the people? Because there is somebody who has innovated. Maybe it doesn't quite meet the mark, but the individual, if you look at them, you realize this guy given the opportunity this person is a sort of person who would be able to take this thing yeah you, you mean you mean you mean you mean from from the that <laughs> pool of uh, of the judges of the judges of the judges yeah yes. yeah 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 well that also has been a, 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 a big debate for us because uh, the last one we had a list of 10 mm. we needed to cut it down to at least five mm. you know so it's always a, the the debate on who do you leave and who, and, who, and who stays on the list. Um, but we always start with a long list of, you know, different kinds of people representing different kinds of sectors, including small businesses, mm. you know, in there. And then and then you're told, look, um, you've got to bring it down to five. So, you know, um, you, 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 pick, you, get, pick, you get the point that, that uh, yeah. City is raising. Yeah. I, I would imagine maybe someone like uh, Kuria, who is a funder, yeah. who is in this space. Yeah does not necessarily always invest in an idea but also they invest in the person yeah look at a, some and somebody and see do they have the passion aligned to themselves Absolutely. and then I, w I want to invest in this person whatever they are working on yeah uh, it's likely to to develop how many other people do you have maybe even working behind the scenes who'd be able to identify this person has has what it takes I'm going to give you a, a, a question here. Mm. We have youths who are unable to read and write, but they have brilliant business ideas. Correct. You'd be able to look at somebody and see, yes, their presentation here is not the best. Yeah. The way they've put together, they've put together this presentation and this pitch is not the best, but they have something about them. You know, you're absolutely right. Um, so part of the selection mm. is to look at who are the guys, the, who are the guys behind the idea? You know, so who are the, who, whose idea was this? um and and what what can we do with the leadership of that company so that's that forms part of the selection criterion so that mm -hmm. you know they have to they have to have some some looks like a, there's a passion there's an ownership around behind that because you you can have a good idea 
But if you don't have a driver behind it, it's not mm. going to grow, however much money you put into it. Mm. But guess get what we also do? That the, the 20, the top 20, before they get to the business competition, mm. we all take them through a pitching prep. So we, we, we tell you, you have a beautiful idea here, but if you pitch it like this, mm. it's not going to work because you're focusing too much on the technical. Mm. We're not seeing the passion. Right. We're not seeing you understanding the market. We're not seeing you understanding the problem. So we, we take you through a two-week process, two-week intensive process of you have a beautiful idea, how can you best sell it? Mm. You know, that not just selling it because, because it is sellable, but it is doable. Because once, once, once money has been put into it, you have no other option. You have to make it <laughs> you work. You have to make it work. You have right. to make it work. So do you understand how it's going to work? You know, do you understand who's producing? Do you, mm. know, do you understand who's buying? Do you understand where you make the money? Because mm. some, some of them have very good ideas. But if you ask them, so what makes it a business? Mm. Why do you make the money? Oh, you know, you know, we have a social enterprise and stuff. But <laughs> nobody's going to put 15 million shillings into your business if you can't show them where you're going to make profit. Yeah. So, you, so you also solve problems, but solve problems in an affordable manner where you also make, you also keep, keep alive. You pay your staff salary, manner. you know, yeah. pay your staff salary, you know, keep your business going, pay your business rent, yeah. you know. So, 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 so during those two weeks, we, we walk through them, we work, we, work, we work with them through a very rigorous process mm. of how, how do you bring it all together? Mm. Home. Yes. How do you bring it all together? And most importantly is where is the passion? Without a passion, business won't drive. Okay. So where is the passion? Half past eight, Kenya's biggest conversation takes a break. Let's take a look at the weather and traffic. What's happening on the roads this hour? We have with us in the studio Charles Waria. He's the lead monitoring and evaluation and learning at the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. The conversation we're having is how to fight unemployment through entrepreneurship. Encouraging entrepreneurs, people to just be innovative, think, think about a solution, make that solution into a business, and then see how you can access funding. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. We'll be back shortly. In the situation room on Spice FM this morning is CT Muga Nduoko Eric Latif. And our guest is Charles Waria. He's a lead monitoring and evaluation and learning at the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. We're having a conversation about fighting unemployment through entrepreneurship. A question coming from a uh, Kipto, who says 14 million is a big sum of money to give just one business. If you divide it to 500,000 or 200, you'll increase the number of the beneficiaries. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And, and that, that's one of the, also the early dilemmas that we had. Why not split the money and give small, small? But then the, 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 another, the other challenge is, is then you keep playing small. So if, if, you, if you give small, you, you play small. What you have is you have small, small businesses that can't grow. Because they're stuck in this in this rut of you know playing small small markets you know local markets. So what we what we said was a, a deliberate decision. We will give a significant amount of money that allows you, um, Eric, if you have your business mm. to grow. Mm. With fourteen million shillings, you you can unlock a lot. Yeah. You can unlock a market. You can unlock a technology. You know uh, you can unlock blockchain. Blockchain would allow you to break into bigger markets mm. in, internationally, mm. as opposed mm. to when we give you half a million. Half a million you can't you can't install blockchain. Mm. Yes, you can, you can barely buy a few equipment here and there with half a million. So we, we're looking to say, what, what can we do with you that will effectively reposition your business? You know, with 14 million, you can reposition a business in this country, a small yeah. business yeah. in this country, and turn them from east <coughs> to the west, the direction of west. And yeah. that's, that was our, our decision. So, monitoring, evaluation, and learning. Yes. For, so far, from the companies that you've financed, that you've helped, yeah. what have you seen? We've seen amazing stuff taking place. Let me, let me start with the, the avocado, for example. Avocado is one of the latest ones. So Kenya, Kenya is losing about 70% of its avocado, um, not, not being able to export it because of the way it's handled. We don't have something called cold chain. And because of that, we lose days and days of shelf life of avocado. Mm -hmm. By the time you export it, it arrives in the market, it's, the, the entire container has a mix of ripe, not ripe, yellow, whatever it is, the entire container gets rejected. Mm -hmm. And so Kenya is losing a lot of money and, and it's not able to play competitively. What does cold chain does? Cold chain ensures that when avocado comes from the tree at 22 degrees ambient temperature, you, you, you lower it down quickly to 15 degrees using a cold, a cold system. So you take it from the tree, put it into the cold system. The cold system is at 15 degrees. The entire journey for that avocado, they are on the same temperature of 15 degrees. By the time they get to the pack house, the pack house will be at 5 degrees centigrade. From the pack house to export, those avocado will arrive uh, in, in South Africa or in Netherlands at the same temperature, at the same condition. Mm -hmm. No container is getting lost. When we started this work with a company called Time Senses, 
before uh, they would lose a, lot, a number of containers that arrive in the Netherlands and the avocado is rejected. Since they installed cold chain, they have not only lost zero percent, but they, they have they have reduced the number of middlemen who are mm. causing the mess in between. Mm. They have reduced margins for farmers from 15 percent to 33 percent margins for farmers. So a farmer gets more because the, 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 the mess of getting the avocado from the tree, trying to find where the market is and all that is also solved for you. We just get it from the tree onto this truck. This truck. So, but cold chain isn't, isn't cheap, it's expensive, you know. Uh -huh. It costs about 97,000 pounds to, to get that done. But because it's been done, there's a lot of gains, you know, from the, from the farmer side, from the company side. That's one company, mm. okay? But look at, look at, for example, Halo Tractor. Halo Tractor uh, started in Nigeria before they came here. When they came here, they were small. So we figured we can do something. But what does it do? Halo Tractor targets smallholder farmers with mechanization. With mechanization. So that instead of, instead of having 20 people till your one acre for four days, okay, you're paying them at a minimum of 300 shillings per day and you still have to feed them. Yeah. You get a tractor. A tractor will do your four acres in one day, okay, at 2,000 shillings per acre. So with 8,000 shillings, you have tilled, you have plowed your four acres. Mm -hmm. It of course you 20,000 shillings, you know, to hiring people, farm hands, they, they till it and all. Two weeks ago, I was, I was in Busia at, 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 at uh, Funula and I met this lady, um, Rose. And she was, she was oppressed about how access to tractor has, has not only turned around her plowing, but also her planting, her, you know, everything she does in the farm, in the four <laughs> farms, you mm. know. And she has significant amounts of money that she has saved, you know that now goes into paying for other inputs that otherwise you would not have paid for before. So what has Hello Tractor done that the other tractor people have not, not been doing? People. Because so, we no, we have tractors in this country. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so Hello Tractor has an amazing solution mm. where they find people who need tractors and they find who have tractors and then they bring them together through a platform. A lot, a lot more times people who have tractor owners do not know where it's a hailer where, tractor they can't find the business they can't find the business right. so they, you have your tractor you're sitting somewhere in uh, in, in malaba or, or whatever it is mm. you're hoping that someone will pass by and say look can i use your tractor mm. but no one no one is passing by so so then you, you don't get to use a tractor what hello tractor does is hello tractor has as they have built a platform it's like an uber mm. and then they have sales people who go around mapping and they, they have this thing they call route optimization tool so you're given a route for example if you're given westlands you map out all the smallholder farmers in Westlands, their acreage, you know, their, their farm requirements, that kind of things. And then you load this information onto the app. Uh -huh. When the tractor owner goes to the app, the tractor owner is able to see if my tractor is, is on Wayaki Way, there are these many smallholder farmers here who Uma, Uma can, uh, can deal with. Can service. Mm -hmm. You have the option of calling them directly mm. or the salesperson will, will then link you up and say, look, in your area, you have, I have 30, 30 farmers for you. No, mm. then you go and negotiate price, you know, and then you get work, you get work for the tractor. Mm. Uh, the, the farmer also gets to know which, which tractors are near me. So I don't, I don't have to go to her and her, I can go to him, mm. but I have, I have the choice of, of saying, look, his tractor mm. is good, but he doesn't have the implements I need. Yeah. So because, so not, not every tractor does the same work. Right. Some tractor owners invest in other implements. So for example, in a, in a, in a, in a planter, you invest in, in something for reaping. You know, others just have the, the, the plow for just for plowing. So depending on the needs of the smallholder farmer, you then pick which tractor has what implements and therefore if, if, how much is he charging me for the tractor and for the implements, you know, and, and, and how, how quickly can I access my farm. Mm -hmm. For a long time, huh? This debate of mechanization <coughs> uh, versus a labor-intensive approach to, say, farming, yes. something that has occupied the minds of many people. Do you find that when you talk about farming in areas where uh, you want to mechanize, does it bring about also a season of unemployment for those who ordinarily might have been employed to do the same work the tractor is doing? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so everywhere where you where you where you introduce technology, mm. there will be some some labor that will be displaced. You know, we we're, we're seeing it. Uh, for example, Mama Rose, she would employ about twenty people. To work on her four acres, now she only needs the tractor owner and the and the, and the guy who's work, work with. So, <laughs> so this <laughs> this twenty this twenty have been uh, have been um, rendered jobless. Yeah. Rendered jobless. But she hopes that when during harvest time, she then brings them back because you can't harvest using tractors. So now they 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 they, they come back during harvesting. You see, um, and then what we see what we saw also is they they find some natural ways of 
redirecting their labor. Yeah. You know, yeah. So so because they will lose the farm, and usually in those kind of instances, the farm owner makes a decision and say, look, 20k, 4k, 20k, 4k, I'll pay 4k. I mean, yeah, it's right. a no-brainer. Yeah, I'll pay 4k for the tractor. You know, uh, and those guys naturally they, they they find a way. But in in the in the solutions, all the solutions that we have. Um, we have supported to be in the, place. In the yeah. rural areas, what these many options that people have, yeah. when what you're selling is your labor, mm. when you can't sell that labor, what else do you think they are likely to do? <laughs> <laughs> because when, by the time you're selling your labor, it means that's what you have to trade with. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Now, I, I know I'm asking a difficult question. Yeah. yeah. I'm, also, I'm also aware that there isn't an easy solution to it. But I also know that Farming is not just a question of tilling the land. Yeah. No, 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 no. In between, whatever it is you're growing, you will need to weed, you will need to do all these things. And yeah. the yes. tractor can't quite do that. Yeah. Of course, of yes. course. Yes. And I think also in the in that area of catalyzing, because yeah. that's what you're saying, you're catalyzing not just the one thing, but the entire value chain. Yeah. In the case, for example, of, of the avocado exporters or this one, the tractor people, yeah. what else in the value chain gets impacted just by funding this one organization a lot more. who else a lot more a mm. lot more so let me let me go back to the the avocado so whereas we we supported um them to set up a, a cool room mm. for for the avocado in a park house the other companies have come in, into that space for example like soco fresh soco fresh they specialize in 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 cooling trucks mm -hmm. so they 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 bring in the entire fleet of trucks fitted with cooling those trucks can be expensive, so not every company can afford it. So, so companies like Soko Fresh, they specialize in, we will then lease these this trucks to you. Other companies have come to, to set up the, the bulking stations, because the bulking stations also need to be fitted with cold systems. So other players have come into space and said, look, our specialty is, is designing and setting up bulking stations, wherever you want it to be set up. Okay. You know, um, other companies have come in with packaging solutions for export, so that when you export the avocado, it stays at the same temperature all the way for hours to where it goes to. So th those again are um, uh, actors that have come into that space simply because we unlocked this 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 cold chain. Sure. So unlocking this cold chain allowed them to come in with with numerous other solutions, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we've seen that you know across across many of these many of these uh, mm -hmm. companies that we're supporting that you you unlock one place, other guys run in quickly. For example, uh, down in Turkana, we we are working with a company called Valu Villages. Valu Villages is process, processing fish fillet and then using the skeletons. To make chicken feed mm. Mm -hmm. um so so when when once we partnered with them other people who produce other ingredients for chicken feed swam this piece and say now you know to make chicken feed you just need you, do, you need more than uh, just the uh skeleton, fish, fish skeleton. Mm. Mm. you need this you need this you need this, you need this so we are here right so now they have all manner of suppliers mm. getting getting stuff from there from lodua from kitale you know <laughs> so it okay i'm looking at i mean all of these different things that we've we've we've, we've talked about so yeah. far yeah. would unfortunately need management mm -hmm. how can you ensure that these businesses that have been supported in yeah. the first instance yeah. then do not reach a point whereby mismanagement or neglect then causes the business to then fall apart Beautiful, beautiful. So as uh, as soon as a business is um, is funded, for example, as soon as a business business wins um, the competition, we change the gear. Mm. So we, we we move into a space called business needs assessment, and the business needs assessment is a robust process where we look at your entire operations, you know, mm -hmm. and seeing where 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 are the strengths, where are the weaknesses, how will you run a proper business, what are your business management practices. Uh, do you have proper accounting system? For example, no, no one is going to hit you with 14 million mm. when you don't have basic accounting system. You take the money and run to Uganda, <laughs> you know, and, and never come back. So we must make sure that you have basic financial management systems in place, you have basic HR systems in place, you have people to help you manage the business with the money. Mm. So we ensure that all, that all that's in place. What happens is with the money, we give you TA. So the money and, and technical assistance go hand in hand, you know. Uh, and we don't we don't hit you with the money all at once, bang. Mm. No, so we have we have tranches. So we give it to you in tranches. Within those tranches, we see how we use it, you know. If 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 tranche one was to was meant to unlock certain international markets, we see how those have been unlocked. Then tranche two is now meant to go and unlock production. We see how our production is unlocked. Tranche three is meant to to build your internal system. We see how those those systems are built. By the time you get your last tranche, we have ensured that you are, you are a business able to stand. You know, and, and, and through the, the through the TA as well. I'm curious. Yeah. Why did the U.S. government want to help us with our unemployment problem? UK. UK. 
Did I say U.S.? You yeah. did. I meant U.K. Okay. <laughs> Let me perhaps put in context. Why yeah. did Her Majesty's government yes. want to assist us with our unemployment, with our unemployment problem. problem? Yeah, I'll break it down to you in a very simple manner. Um, can't, can't countries like the U.K. and in, in other countries in the West have invested in a lot of aid in countries like in Africa that has consumed millions and millions of pounds? And every country that has been giving aid, you know, always asks the question, so to, to what extent have we addressed this poverty? We've been addressing this poverty since these countries got, got independent. Why is it this poverty? Uh, even, even the discussion on poverty is never changing. You see? So, so, the, so the thinking then was, is there another way to tackle poverty without necessarily giving free money, giving relief food, mm. help them in the health systems, mm. help them in this and this. So they said, maybe unlocking this through jobs. Get, get some of them who have good ideas, partner with them in terms of growing those businesses. So that if you support one business, mm. it, may, it may employ 100 people. If you support another business, it may employ 1,000 people. That changes the game and, and brings in aid from aid to trade. Previously, it was the, the conversation was aid, aid, aid. Mm. And aid wasn't, wasn't uh, employing anybody other than NGO workers. So everybody else, all the, all the, poor, all the poor folks in Kibra still remain poor. In spite, if, if you put 20 million pounds in there, you put 40, 40 million pounds, yes, they will have water, but they still don't have jobs. Yeah. Right. So now you say, why don't I find a youth in Kibra who can give me a, 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 an innovative solution of providing water to Kibra, but employs people? They'll get water, they'll get jobs. They'll get water, they'll get jobs. And, and if they want to sell that water elsewhere, if they want to, 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 to import the, export that water, then we can help them find a market to export that water. Mm -hmm. We simply tell them, look, to, to export this water to Europe, you need to package it this way, you need to have this processing machine in this way, and then meet these quality standards, and then you can export this water to Europe. Okay. You know. Out of the goodness of their hearts, of course. <laughs> How do they benefit from this? Yeah, let, me, let me explain why I'm asking this question, Charles. Yeah. There's an entire school of thought mm -hmm. who are of the view that any country that was a colonizing country is merely returning what they took. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 so this is guilt. Yes, That's it's like taxpayer. Yeah. Well, you, you know, <laughs> when the government tells you are doing this, it's your money they're using anyway. They're yeah. those, but it's from that school of thought. So yeah. I, when I ask the question, yeah. what do they gain from it? Yeah. It's from that background. And I, and I guess, I guess uh, let, let me give an, another, an analogy that um, uh, in my life I, I, I supported family, extended family, siblings, you know. And sometimes you, you support a sibling until they, they, they're done with school. Mm. And, then, and then you hope that now that you're done with school, you're going to get a job. They tell you, I, I can't get a job, can you help me get a job? So you help them get a job. Then like, okay, so now that you, now that you have a job, maybe you can, I can reduce my expenses. I don't have to pay your rent anymore. Yes. I don't have to, but then when, when I still come back and ask for rent and ask for this, you're like, but how, why, why, why is this help I'm extending to you not working? Now, over the years, yes, the, the, the modernization theorists have come and say, look, um, you know, Europe underdeveloped Africa and therefore through colonization, you need to give back, you need to give back. In my view, that's a stale argument. It's mm. been 60 years. There's been many opportunities for get Africa to grow. Uh, get over it, you know. Okay. Uh, and, and we can't say, oh, you know, they can't give in perpetuity. They didn't plan in perpetuity. Now, we have turned our laziness into, into blame game and say, look, we're, I, I'm, I'm poor because, I'm poor because. because and a lot, you were here a lot of people, years ago. yes, mm. a lot of people, even on the streets, a lot of people who, are, who, are, who have different situations who find someone to blame for it. Mm. Oh, I'm poor because this happened. I'm poor because, and I have this, that conversation with my relatives and friends all the time. I said, "Look, no, it's, you're not. No, you're not poor because, yeah. You, if you, you can change your game, you can you can change your tide mm. if you want to. Uh, Africa has has an opportunity. Kenya has an opportunity to change the tide. You asked what's in it for the UK government. I will tell you, it's a partnership. It's a beautiful partnership. Um, I take I take pride when I see someone I've worked with and I've supported is on their feet and they're doing so well. And I'm like, you know what? That's my friend. So the, the stain on your image when you're associated with somebody who has uh, succeeded is a good one. It's a good one. Mm. Yeah. You look, you look back and say, look, I, I was part of that. Mm. Yes, I was a part of that. Don't I, be kind. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, but. I did a stain on the image. It's a good stain. You know, you However. Good one. It, doesn't, it doesn't look bad, right? Yes, yes. That we, you're not necessarily getting anything out of it, you yeah. know. It's not. So the reciprocity here yeah. is that you have helped and that you've contributed 
whether it's an individual, whether it's a community, whether it's a government. Absolutely. That Absolutely. you have contributed to the status of somebody who would have otherwise... Your conscience is clearer. Right. Let, me give an, let me give an example. So today, <laughs> today the Kenya Catholic Jobs Fund has created 91,000 jobs. Mm. Has created 91,000 jobs. Those are 91,000 young people who are who, uh, Kenyans who are making a living, you know. Remove the fund, and what will have happened to those 91,000 people? Yeah. They'll be somewhere, you know. Yeah. With the same, 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 or nowhere, or nowhere you know, with, with, uh, with, with, you know, with no funds. So we, we take pride. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a UK person, I'm a Kenyan person. But I take pride that these kinds of partnerships, mm -hmm. you know, help to address a real problem in this country in a different way, you know. Yeah. You know, in Charles, a different way. I actually support I what you're doing. <laughs> and Let me just say what I'm referring to. Yeah. Is having a realistic and an honest relationship. Because altruism, much as it sounds good, is very rarely practicable. Mm. That is really where I'm coming yeah. from. Yeah. Let the relationship be there. Let everything that you're saying be done. But let's be honest about it. Let's be honest about yeah. everything. Eh? Yes. All the cards on the table. Yes. Facing and, upwards. And we are honest with this one. Let's say goodbye to our audience on KTN Home. We've been with us since the top of the hour. Thank you very much for watching. These conversations happen every weekday morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Spice FM. And Spice FM is on 94.4 in Nairobi, Mombasa, it's 87.9, 102.5 in Kisumu, Nakuru, 96.0, 96.7 in Eldoret, 90.9 in Yeri and Malindi, 97.7. Um, unfortunately, we only had money for three rounds. Okay. Uh, so and, unless um, the UK government... Um, uh, designs another fund similar similar to this one. Um, this this the, the round that we had for this year was, is the last round, um, and then you know we hope that there will be similar programs in future. Okay. Yeah. So in the meantime, you're working with the companies that have already benefited so far. Yeah. And how many are there so far? To date, we have the awarded twenty companies. That's a good yeah. figure to work with. Yes, sir. So twenty, 20 companies, and all yeah. of them are doing well. All of them, yes. Uh, uh, the, the, the ones in the cohort three just got awarded, mm. so they're just getting started. But we have 15 that are on a good path to, to success. Mm. There are many people who have uh, ideas, business ideas. I mean, they've hit, some have hit a dead end in looking for jobs. Yeah. And now they are thinking, idea, got to transform this. Yeah. Others have always thought, I can get into business. In just a short sentence, a minute, what would you tell them? I'll tell them no idea is a bad idea. Mm. But what makes a good idea and, and what separates a good idea from a different, different other ideas is you are a solution to what problem. If we all listen, listened and, and, and observed our society, we realize that we come up with very viable solutions that address issues. The person who comes up with the water ATM in Kibra and, and the, in the slums listened to the, the people in Kibra and their water needs and said, this piping is not going to work. This other so so I'm, I'll bring water ATMs. Water ATMs, you're not giving water for free, you're, but you're moving the cost of water from 20 shillings per 20 litre jerry can to 2 shillings per 20 litre jerry can. What you have done is you have not only reduced the cost of water, houses that were previously using 5 jerry cans will be using 10 jerry cans mm. because now water is more affordable. Mm. You have brought in better hygiene, you know, better health, but also you're brought in an affordable solution. And it's making money. And it's making money. Bas. Thank you very much, Charles. Charles Waria is the lead monitoring and evaluation and learning at the Kenya Catalytic Jobs Fund. Asante Sana, come back again soon with some of these companies that are doing very well. Thank you. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Good morning. It's 9 a.m.